Hi, I'm Bart Massey. Welcome to Computer Sound and Music. Hope you're doing well out there. Today we're going to be talking about MIDI, the musical instrument digital interface, which is the standard used for controllers to communicate with synthesizers. And it's important to understand at least the basics of MIDI if you're going to be doing synthesizer work. So while this is a brief lecture, I think there will be a lot of useful information in it for you. Let's get started. So yeah, the musical inter instrument digital interface is absolutely ancient. It comes from a scheme designed for a synthesizer, a very famous and wonderful synthesizer called the Prophet 600 back in 1982. When the Prophet 600 came out, I got a chance to play one and I wanted it really, really badly, but it was an insane amount of money. And so I never did get one. These days, I imagine I can find a reasonable emulation that will run on my computer just fine. The Before that, the analog synthesizers used schemes called control voltage schemes. And the idea there is that you literally input a voltage corresponding to the note that you want. So it's a completely analog thermometer based scheme and control voltages were used for all kinds of other things in analog synthesizers and to this day there's whole hobbyist groups that build control voltage based analog synthesizers for fun fortunately or unfortunately that terminology has crept into a lot of synthesis so you're going to be hearing me talk over the next few lectures about a lot of voltage controlled things but of course in a modern digital synthesis setup they aren't really voltage controlled so just think of voltage as a parameter so think of when i say voltage controlled oscillator think of parameter controlled oscillator uh, that you can vary the frequency by changing some parameter so the midi standard is a large complex standard it's been remarkably stable since it came out we just got a few years ago the next version of the MIDI standard um, well there's the 1996 MIDI standard and really it froze for a long time after that the original standard was in 1982 then there's the 1996 standard anyway if you follow the link in the notes you can get to the complete MIDI specification document. The bad news is that you have to register to get it. The good news is that it's free registration and I would highly encourage you to grab a copy and page through it. But there's a lot there so I'm going to try to give you the very basics in this talk that you need to be able to synthesize with MIDI. In the standard, we have two things. We have instrument. An instrument is the synthesizer itself. And we have the controller. And typically, the controller is a keyboard. That would be the normal thing to control synthesizers with. It may also be knobs connected to the keyboard. You may have separate arrays of knobs. You may have drum pads. There's a million kinds of potential MIDI controllers. The standard is very general and accommodates a lot of different kinds of controllers reasonably well. but Usually when I say controller, I'm going to mean keyboard. The original MIDI physical interface is a product of its time. So it was a was and is a two-wire serial interface on a five-pin circular DIN connector that looks like an AT keyboard connector, if you remember those. And so if you're looking for MIDI cables, I can highly recommend looking for AT keyboard cables instead, which you can still find in junk bins and stuff that work just fine as MIDI cables and are cheaper and easier to find. But anyway, we've got this two-wire serial interface on this collector, on this connector, and it's one directional. It's absolutely a given MIDI channel goes from a controller to an instrument or potentially from an instrument to a controller, although that's way more rare. The So if you wanna go both ways, you need two MIDI connections is I guess my point. And 
it's what's called a five milliamp current loop with an opto isolator in it according to the spec and so that's a really really strange interface electrically that makes it hard to connect standard equipment to it without a special analog dongle to make the midi signaling spec work it runs at a rate of 31 250 bits per second which is a super awkward baud rate bit rate the 19200 and 38400 were sort of standard modem bit rates and all the serial chips did them very well it's often hard with older serial chips to get them to clock close enough to 31 250 to meet the spec so that's annoying and then the serial protocols just absolutely bog standard you transmit eight bits and then you transmit a one bit called the stop bit which gives the circuitry time to reset for the next byte so electrically it's weird signaling wise it's weird but at the end of the day it's a stream you can send bytes through and that's the important part and because this interface was always awkward through the whole lifetime of MIDI, it's as soon as USB became a thing, people started thinking about maybe we could use USB instead and trade one kind of complexity for another. And so one of the earlier device classes to appear for MIDI, MIDI uh, for USB, USB has this notion of a device class, which is a standard for how a particular kind of device, like a modem or a MIDI device or a video camera or whatever, talks over USB. And the idea of device class standardization is that way you don't have to have special drive USB drivers for each device and software knows what to expect and how to talk to devices. And so it makes everything nicer when there's a device class. Strangely, one of the only device classes that you'd expect to have that's absolutely not out there is serial devices. If you want to run old serial lines over USB, there's no real standard for how to do that because Microsoft, who is one of the main proponents of USB, was doing it partly to try to kill serial, and they really didn't want serial to be a thing. Anyway, there's this MIDI USB device class, which describes how to map the MIDI standard onto a USB port. And that standard is, that's as far back as 1999, is uh, what a lot of instruments and a lot of controllers use today. You can still find instruments and controllers with a MIDI port on it because with modern hardware, it's not that expensive to add but typically you'll be working with USB. And the good news about USB is that it's much simpler to hook up and it doesn't require any special hardware. The bad news is that USB tends to have more jitter. MIDI was very, very regular and you really don't want any jitter when you're playing. It can be annoying. I don't find the jitter noticeable, but some musicians claim to. The other thing is latency. Uh, MIDI latencies were essentially zero because it was an electrical straight through protocol. The only latencies were whatever you added yourself on either end. So USB, on the other hand, is going to have some latency because of the way it's designed. I could go into the details, but I think it's beyond scope here. And so it's not a perfect replacement for hardware MIDI, but... It's pretty nice. If you really need hardware MIDI and all you have is a USB port, for starting around $10 on Amazon, you can find a cable or an adapter box that will convert between the old analog MIDI standard and the USB standard. And those typically are bi-directional. They have an input port, a MIDI input port and a MIDI output port connected to the USB line. So if you have older hardware that requires classic MIDI interface, then that's the normal solution for dealing with that hardware with computer and current use. So what is this MIDI protocol? Let's just do a really quick overview of MIDI. MIDI consists of a series of messages, each one to three bytes in length, 
normally that communicate some specific piece of information that's really designed mostly to communicate from a controller to an instrument from your keyboard to your synthesizer and so the first byte is something called the status byte which i find a confusing name because it's really the command byte it says this is what this message means so the controller is saying here's what i want you to do and then you're allowed one or two data bytes after that to describe the parameters of what you want to do. We'll see an example in a minute. There is a special case. There's something called SysX's system exclusive messages, which were designed so that controller and instrument manufacturers, especially instrument manufacturers who wanted to do something out of the standard had an extension clause for doing that. So you can send a SysX message and then send some bytes that whose interpretation isn't defined by the MIDI standard. And then typically you send an EOX byte as the status byte to stop your SysX transmission. And so a lot of older synthesizers, a lot of older instruments will have SysXs they respond to to do things like program their internals or upgrade their firmware or who knows what. And if you know those, you can write custom code or use some commercial package that has custom code to send those SysXs to the device to get something special done. But normally, you know, the 99% case is you're sending a status byte followed by whatever data it wants and the instrument is receiving that and it tells it what to do. MIDI has a concept of channels. Uh, the idea of channels is that if you want to have different instruments all connected to the same MIDI controller or different controllers connected to the same instrument or whatever, you can say, no, 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 this is part of this channel, this is part of this channel. It turns out that part of the old classic electrical spec for MIDI is something called through, which is an optional part of the standard. You could provide a MIDI through port that would retransmit whatever it got on the in port as well as recognizing it. And that through port meant that I could chain several instruments to a single controller or chain several controllers for controllers with a through port to a single instrument. And that meant I could do more things. And at that point, the channels became important. Most of the time, the channels aren't used in modern MIDI. Most of the time, the instrument is set to Omni, meaning accept messages for any channel. And the instrument is sent, set to send on channel zero or one. And uh, that's the end of that story. The most important messages, the key messages, if you'll excuse me, are the note on and note off messages. Those are sent, so when I send a note on, I send a note number, that's the note number that I actually want to play on the instrument, and I also optionally send a byte of velocity information. Well, what's velocity mean? It's intended to reflect the speed at which the key on your keyboard was pressed down, essentially. That's what they mean by velocity. So if I press harder, then typically the key will move faster. And if the key moves faster, then you'll get a higher velocity number. And it turns out the instrument called the piano forte, eventually shortened to piano, its special property was that it was the first keyboard instrument that really had a high dynamic range. Piano means uh, soft in Italian, and forte means loud. So the piano was the soft, loud instrument. And if you played lightly, you could get a soft note. If you hammered the thing, you could get a very loud note. And that was considered a huge technology advance in the time of Bach or so to be able to do that as opposed to the harpsichord and the clavichord, which didn't have much dynamic range at all. And so velocity is a thing that your controller can send. Many modern controllers do, some don't. The fanciest controllers act more like a piano and actually can sense pressure rather than velocity, which 
is a little different and they'll still use the velocity byte to indicate the pressure. So basically how hard do you hit the key? That's your velocity. So I get a note on message. It's got a key number indicating which note I want to play. I'm supposed to play as an instrument and I get a velocity, which if it's, it, it if the if the controller doesn't have any way to detect velocity it will send a max velocity as the thing and otherwise it may send some smaller number indicating no it wasn't pressed as fast as you could and the other important message is note off when i let go of the key then again the controller sends which key just got let go of it sends what the velocity of release was. That's less common on controllers, but still reasonably common. It turns out that as part of the standard, or at least a de facto standard, some controllers won't, older controllers won't send note off messages at all. Instead, they'll send a, a note on message again with velocity zero. So you really should interpret a note on with velocity zero as a note off. But your traffic between a MIDI controller and a MIDI instrument is typically going to be pretty much entirely note on, note off, note on, note off, and each note is marked with its key number and its velocity, each message is. So that's the main MIDI thing, and if that's all you implement of MIDI, all you know about MIDI, you can really get a lot done. Most controllers of course have more things than that on them this is a controller that i use a lot for what i do i got this for i don't know 40 bucks or something at a guitar center when it was going out of business and this controller actually let me switch real fast to see what i'm doing here this controller actually has uh a volume knob, a pan knob, a pitch wheel, and a bend wheel, and that kind of stuff's typical. It also has some buttons up on the top, which may or may not result. Anyway, the point is there's also standard in the MIDI message to send controller parameters, and you can process those so your instrument can tell when the volume knob has been turned and actually change the volume it's playing at. So volume, balance, pan, expression, wheels, all kinds of stuff is supported and in fairly standardized ways. And so I can grab a different controller such as this smaller guy here. And you can see it has a lot more knobs on it and doesn't have so many keys. There's a whole bunch of sort of very general purpose controller knobs here that are just marked controller one through controller eight it looks like one two three four five six seven eight yeah and uh so that when i turn those knobs all that happens is a midi message is sent to the instrument saying hey somebody turned a knob and it was this knob and so that can be really useful if you're trying to do fancy things with your controller there are some caveats here. There's not, so far as I'm aware, any way to tell where the controller is when you start up. So until somebody moves a controller, you don't know what it's set to, which is super annoying. The other real problem with it that I'll talk about later is that it's hard to tell when a controller has been disconnected and that leads to some issues. So the other thing that they typically have as part of the MIDI spec is that it would be nice if, especially for older MIDI instruments, older MIDI synthesizers, typically you'd have some stored information corresponding to specific sounds. One of the nice things about a synthesizer, it's a general purpose instrument. The same thing can make a lot of different sounds. And so you'd have what's called um, banks and programs and patches, which are sort of the way that you select which synthesizer, how you want your synthesizer to be set up, what sound you want it to be playing. 
and that's all controllable from the controller too so that i can switch sounds in the middle of a song or between songs or whenever i want there's a ton of stuff the spec is worth skimming just to find out the whole range of capabilities that are in there but i think that's the highlights of the midi spec the most important thing is probably the note on and note off messages after that the next most important thing is reading the controllers if you want to mess with those and then there's a ton there's support for midi files so controllers are real time and typically although you can have a sequencer which is a controller that sends note on and note off messages under program control and that you don't actually play the instrument that works that works without much fiddling around but you may also want to actually agree that a whole bunch of things happen at exactly the same time so there's support in the midi spec for that this note on and this note on are the same time for sequencers in particular you can send a bunch of notes on beat and that will that will transfer them then and then there's this standard format floating around called the MIDI file format. And the idea of MIDI files is rather than sending my controller output just to an instrument, I can record it with the timing and everything of these note on and note off messages and control changes. And now I have a recording of exactly what the performer played that's not tied to the instrument very directly. So. I could play a piece on piano and then take the MIDI file and set it up to play with a guitar synthesizer and it'll sound like I was playing it on a guitar to the extent that synthesized guitars sound good, which is... So that's, that's classic and a lot of people work with MIDI a lot without ever actually in working with a live control. It's a common thing. One of the problems, like I mentioned earlier, is that it's hard to tell when an old school, a serial MIDI controller has been disconnected. So when I unplug it electrically from the in instrument's point of view, nothing has really happened. And they went to a lot of trouble to make that true because reasons. It's great if I have something, a cable gets kicked out to be able to just plug it back in and keep playing. But one of the nightmare scenarios especially in a performance situation is you know the the cable does get kicked out or something else happens the controller fails or whatever after a note on has been sent but before the note corresponding note off has been sent now the default behavior of the synthesizer the instrument's going to be to hold that note indefinitely so now in the middle of your performance suddenly you got a bunch of notes playing that you didn't ask for ask to keep playing and didn't want to keep playing and so you really want some way to deal with this uh there should be a some way on your synthesizer to tell it to shut up by pushing a button or whatever some easy way locally to say no 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 stop playing all your notes right now and there's messages in the MIDI spec called all notes off and all sounds off that are supposed to stop the synthesizer from making any more noise. You can look up the weird technical difference between all notes off and all sounds off. It has to do with the sustain pedal. And ideally your synthesizer will respond to those messages so that you have the normal risk that you have with an electric guitar or anything else that somebody will kick a cable loose and you're not playing anymore, but at least you don't have the risk of somebody kicks a cable loose and you're playing when you don't want to be. Really, MIDI is one of those things where you absolutely could build your own stuff. You could build your own thing that talked to the USB MIDI in user land on your favorite operating system you could absolutely build something that talked to a midi hardware controller on your favorite operating system but it's complicated there's a lot of management and a lot of weird stuff i always use somebody else's library to deal with midi messages if nothing else it deals with a lot of the 
weird decoding stuff and it's probably worth the price of admi admission so the strategy for a controller or an instrument if you're building one is similar if you have a controller you figure out what you want to be able to make your instrument your synthesizer do and you design whatever you're going to design of the controller itself and then you figure out what set of what's the minimum standard set of MIDI messages that will make your synthesizer do the thing you wanted and a lot of the time that's just dead simple because the standard was really designed to be good for controllers but if you want to do something really weird like on the fly micro tuning then that can take a lot of thinking and work. The instrument's the same story. Figure out what you want the instrument to be able to do, figure out what messages you have to respond to and are willing to respond to to make it do that. Like I say, at minimum, you're gonna be responding to note on and note off messages, typically, but you might also choose to respond to one or more controller messages. At least a volume knob is a really nice touch if you're willing put in the work to have one of those. But the real key is start simple. MIDI is nice because it's a spec where if you just start simple and work with note on and note offs, you can implement a lot without having to think too hard about MIDI. And as you start to mature and grow your instrument, you can start to mature and grow your use of the standard to support that. This is really, MIDI is really the standard at this point for controlling synthesizers and so your thing is sort of only marginally a synthesizer if it doesn't have some way to MIDI control it pretty much every keyboard made now electronic keyboard made now has a MIDI out or a USB MIDI out pretty much every synth workstation or synthesizer has MIDI in standard MIDI in or USB MIDI in to be able to control its functionality. And so this is just an inherent part of the synthesizer landscape. And hopefully it's gonna be something that you'll get familiar with pretty easily that you do need to get familiar with. Hope this was useful. Hope you're doing well out there. And I will talk to you again soon.